Hey everybody, it's Dipio. Welcome to What Remains of Edith Finch. Okay, quick note on this game. Um, I was actually suggested to play this a little while back during my Octodad playthrough uh, by one of the view one of my viewers, and um, I didn't really know anything about it. Um, but you know, I'm always open to suggestions, so I came uh, and and gave it a try, um, and sat down and recorded um, some of this game a little while back. However. <laughs> Catastrophic audio failure ruined um, every recording I made. So I would say, I don't know, about 50% of this is not going to be a blind playthrough because I saw it when I first recorded. But uh, I never got to finish it and I wanted to give a little time for it to kind of like fall out of my head. Or, uh, before I went back in and jumped back into it because I was really really liking it and I was really digging the story and I didn't want it to to come across as like oh yeah I've been here before blah 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 when I started um, going through it again so I took my time off it's been months now since I've I've tried this game and uh, I'm ready to dive back into it and I really want to get uh, get through it and get into it again so I would say again Maybe 50, 60 percent I've already seen um, going towards the latter half, not so much. So it's a it's a half blind play playthrough. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that being said, uh, this game is a uh, walking simulator um, with a very, very heavy emphasis on storytelling, which I, I actually really dig. Um, I, I'm one of those guys, you know, I love a good, you know, action uh, um hands, palm sweaty kind of game, um, D Dark Souls, Bayonetta, whatever, you know, those, those kind of games are awesome. But if the story is good, I don't mind just walking around and looking at things. That's just, I I'm totally okay with that. And, and from what I played of this, the story was that good. So I'm really excited to jump back in and actually see it all the way through this time. So if you will please join me as we dive back into the world of Edith Finch. We are on a ferry, and we are crossing Puget Sound, and we're heading to her old home, which we'll learn about here in a moment. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. Here we are in the woods of Washington, which I tell you what, I've, I've been a lot of places, um, surprisingly not as many in the U.S. as around the world, but um, Washington does have some of those gorgeous forests in the world. Someone had put up a chain link fence, but it looked like I wasn't the first person to hop it. I wonder if you'll be the last. Okay, um... My brother place. Milton disappeared when I was four. It was like the house just swallowed him up. So Milton Finch, uh, born in May of 92, went missing in um, October of 2003. He was 11 years old. And if we check in her book, her journal that she keeps, you'll see that... What we're going to be going through here is kind of a history of her family um, from its foundations in America all the way through to her and where she's at now. And as you'll see, Lewis and Milton um, are on her branching tree, so they should, they're her brothers. Uh, and we'll learn, we'll learn a little bit about these people as we go along. But anyway, there's Milton that we just talked about um, They've, they've listed him as dead, but he's only he's been missing since 2003. Uh, we don't really have a time frame for what the actual date is yet. Um, I don't remember if I find one, but we'll keep our eyes open. And uh, I love the design of the house. It's like a crazy, um, Lily Snicket, Willy Wonka kind of but thing. But I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Well, half the rooms are way above sea level, so I don't blame them.
Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. So seven years ago. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. So if she hasn't been back since her brother's funeral, he died in 2010. Let's go ahead and assume this is 2017 is the date of this for now, unless we find something solid. <laughs> I love that. I love the way the words interact. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. All right, well, the first time I, I, I went this route, I went down into the forest. I think I'm going to go the high road this time and see if there's any differences. No one had driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. I can't imagine anyone ever driving this on anything but a motorcycle. This is not a lot of room for a car. <laughs> oh dear. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. Oh, she inherited the whole house. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. Oh. Either I didn't catch that or I didn't remember that last time that she actually inherited the house. The house was exactly like I remembered it. The way I'd been dreaming about it. Alright. I want to take a second here and just check something out real quick. see if we can uh, eliminate that screen tearing we had going on there. Not a fan of that. The woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent. Look, it's missing posters. As if they're about to say something, but never do. And I think I'll end up backtracking back to the house, but we'll take a look. Because I can veer a little bit, but as it is story driven, there's not much um, in the way of branching exploration. So that would just take me, yeah, I think this is it. This just walks me back. Yeah, getting out here with like groceries would be a nightmare, but kind of a cool place to to visit, I would think. I don't know that I'd want to have to make this trek every day if you didn't like work from home or something. <laughs> that's a that's a bit of a, a march. They said you could drive through here, but I just don't believe it. I asked Edie once about the dragon in the pond. She said it had killed her husband. I was six. It seemed like an odd joke to me, even then. What's well, an odd thing to say to a six-year-old? There's a, a million other things you could have said, Edie. Um, or at least less... Uh, Bluntly. <laughs> All right. Go right up through the garden into the front door. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. As an adult, all I can see is the maintenance on this place. Oh. 
Damn, missing posters, like, everywhere. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. What? I was afraid of the house. Oh. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Okay. A little porch swing. Now this is the kind of house that you would have, um, and you would have staff to take care of it. <laughs> it's too difficult otherwise. Oh, like well, there's no outdoor handle on the garage. Okay. Through the cat door, huh? Prowling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. Okay. Oh, a little sunlight peeking through. Looks like it's going down. The tennis ball for parking the car. Nice. Oh, it's Chinese Finding Nemo. <laughs> no, that's still not going to work. Okay. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. So it's been seven years since anyone's been here? Or just since Edith has been here? But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. There's Dawn, Edith, Edie, and Louis. So her older brother, her grandma, her mom, and her. Okay. Like how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. Well, I can't blame them, quite frankly. Or how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. <laughs> oh, jeez. Was Lewis stealing? That's a lot of tuna, or salmon. <laughs> no lights. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. We left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. So not just Edith took off that night, whatever night this was. Is this another menu? My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. This place is not that bad if it's really been seven years. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it. Like a smile with too many teeth. Well, that doesn't look normal. Part of the fireplace is missing. I also wouldn't stack my TV on a bunch of books. That seems... Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank. Ha! Up the flue. Nice. What have we here? Bugs and crabs. And another door. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement. So I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. 
Barbara Finch, my friend Bigfoot. <laughs> nice. Is it actually like winding down correctly? Yep, that's cool. I love little details. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. Uh, ooh. All the... All the doors... Foamed shut with a giant bracket bolted across. Edie ooh. told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Metaphorically, or or should we not go digging in the books? That's cool. Oh, packing peanuts. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. Yeah, I guess we're going upstairs. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. <laughs> Is that the peepholes that we just looked through? Oh, we have an open door. Okay. Wait a second. Uh, she's got a dog mask on or something. What's over here? Gregory? This is Gregory's. As a kid, I just Whoa. assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. That is a pink, fluffy bathroom. Calvin? My Grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. Sharing it with his dead brother? See, now, I did not do these peepholes before. I'm getting more interesting story that I don't remember. Sharing a room with his dead brother. <laughs> cool bookcase slash wine cabinet. Ooh. Edie's father Odin built the original house. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Barbara is a uh, de facto um, Shirley Temple, <laughs> except of B, B monster movies. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. That's not locked. That's a wicked door. Taming the Sea, a fisherman's guide. Tales and tastes and tummies. The Nordic cookbook. Raw fat. Ooh, raw fowl. Okay. We got. I like that with the Odin. We got like the Norse heritage here. Like, I'm not going to try and read that. <laughs> Fanny Farmer Jr. Cookbook. Mrs. Bell's Bakery. It's like cookbooks and Nordic history things. The Big Book of Homeschooling. It's not very big. Cosmic Cuisine. The Metamorphosis. Pastoralia. Wild Feast. Dreamer's Tales. Man, they actually look like there might not be a lot of overlap in the books. That's crazy. I'm sure there has to be across the house, but if somebody thought up to separate titles for all of these, that's impressive. All right, we're going to look in Barbara's room. Barbara was a child star for two years until America grew out of it. <laughs> her Hollywood name, her Hollywood sign. Okay. Well, it looks like everything is barred, except... Wait, did I come in here? Oh, no, I looked in the pink bathroom in Calvin and Sam's room. I didn't look in Sven and Edie's room. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. Oh. And then 
This was the hallway that had an open door. Did we look in here? This is Molly. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. I love these houses. I mean, these rooms. All individually designed. Oh look, one that's open so they didn't put a peephole on it. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Why? It's a cool room. I even like how the imperfections in the wallpaper make it work because it's all water. And there's a train underwater for some reason. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Well, you're about to find out. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Oh. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. Okay. So, if I come in here, reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. We definitely had a secret passage. A secret passage that somebody put a stained glass window in. <laughs> From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Milton was pretty good. But I had no idea what was behind that door. <sighs> Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. Ah, we're in Molly's room. Okay. All right. So, um, kind of the structure of this of this game is built around different rooms and exploring the history of the, the people in those rooms. So I'm gonna kind of break the episodes up like that. Um, so we'll get a different room each time. Um, uh, if I were, at least, you know, from the time that I got through it, the rooms made a pretty good self-contained episode. So we'll go, we'll go with it like that. Um, so next time we will come through and we will, we will take a glimpse into Molly's story. But for now, guys, um, thank you so much for joining me as I get back into this. I've been dying to play this again. Forcing myself to stop to, to try and forget as much as I could was was kind of a kind of a pain in the butt because I really wanted to I really wanted to get through this one. I was really enjoying it. Um, I think you guys will too. Um, quite honestly, the story is just is the stories that were told were just great, and um, I, I want to see how the whole thing kind of comes together in the end. Well. That being said, um, please join me next time and we'll go explore, uh, explore Molly's backstory. And um, I, hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys dig it as much as I do. So, all right. See you next time. Take care of yourselves.